double pane soundproof glass. Not really, but it's still a nice window. Okay, so today we're gonna be talking about this, a window that we installed on our sliding door. Now the whole reason we wanted to make a video on this window install is because while we were putting it in, we really couldn't find any resources to help us out, or nothing that was very concise. There's a lot of information out there that contradicts each other. Now we know that not everyone is gonna to wanna to put a window in their van. It makes it less insulated, it costs more money, and some people just might wanna keep their van more stealthy. Stealthy. But coming from my last van, I really wanted to try to include more natural light. So we went and got ourselves a window and gave it a shaft. Plus, in this van, we're gonna be putting some plants in it and they need light. So since I wanted a window with a decent sized opening like this, Whoa! We ended up getting it from a place called Camper Van HQ. And it was around $600 before shipping, so it wasn't cheap. Anyway, the window got to us in a few weeks and luckily it arrived in one piece. So even though the window was made to fit within the bodywork of the Sprinter, I just wanted to double check that it actually did. Because you don't want to have to go through all the steps, cut a hole in your van and find out that it actually doesn't fit quite right. And if any of you watch our previous video on installing flares from Flare Space, we actually cut the holes for both flares and this window on the same day. So some of this process is gonna be similar. If not almost exactly the same. <laughs> on to the supplies and tools. What do we need, Ben? We <laughs> <laughs> just fit. <laughs> You're gonna want a straight edge and a marker, a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, a drill bit that's a little larger than the metal cutting blade, a file, some primer, and some tape. You'll also want some 3M window weld, single step primer, and a couple daubers, but we'll get into that a little later. And before you get started, it's also not a bad idea to have some eye protection and ear protection. I will point out I had some gloves on, and we've had several comments expressing how it could be dangerous to have gloves while using a jigsaw. It might get sucked up into the blade, causing more damage than if you were to have nothing on at all. I was just worried about covering my hands from all the hot metal shards that were spitting out as I was cutting along the line, but I guess losing a few fingers is a little more important. It's important to lose fingers. Yes, it's important to lose them, not Peace keep step. them. Yeah. All right, so you're gonna wanna start by tracing your cut line. We just followed the lip of the inner panel and used a straight edge to trace over the support beams where they pop out. Then it's time to grab your drill and place several holes all along the line that you just traced. I placed holes in all of the straight sections as well as every corner so I had multiple entry spots for my jigsaw blade. Then it was finally time to start cutting our opening. I also removed the guide on my jigsaw because when I was cutting the flares I was having a really hard time getting close on the corners. The guide kept hitting and scuffing and I snapped a few blades so this time around I just went without the guide entirely. It does does make it a little bit harder, but if you keep a steady hand and take your time, you'll be able to do it fine. You could keep the guide on for all of the straight sections and then come back with the guide off to get your corners, or you could cut from the outside and not have to deal with any of this, but you'd have to make a template, align it properly, and that'll probably take you a lot more time. So while cutting along your line, it's a good idea to start from the bottom and work your way to the top. If you start from the top, as you work your way to the bottom, that cutout's gonna want to wibble wobble. Wibble wobble. <laughs> And that wibble wobble will get worse and worse and it'll start to pinch your blade as you're cutting and causing it to snap. Plus it's a good idea to have someone help you so they can keep an extra hand and minimize the wibble wobble and also catch it as you make your final cut. Once your hole's cut, you're gonna have a bunch of untethered fingers. <laughs> Man. Once your hole's cut, you're gonna need to come back through and clean up all of your edges. You don't wanna have any like crazy spiky burrs that are gonna catch and cut you or me. <laughs> this is a rough one. Okay, so we're going through and hitting any high spots with the grinding wheel, and then we're also using the file to kind of brush off any of the burrs. 40 grit standing wheel. Apparently, we did not use our metal file appropriately because you're supposed to move in one direction the entire time. I will say we got it right 50% of the time because we went back and forth. So if you end up using a file, just go in one forward direction, pick it up, and then start back 
and go forward again. Luckily, I came back through and sanded it all down with the 40 grit grinding wheel. And that cleaned it all up. It's also a good idea to blow out any metal shards that may have fallen within the cracks and grooves in the van. You don't want those sitting around and then moisture and condensation getting in and then rusting. It just causes more of a headache later. Now that your edges are smooth, the next step is to go through with some enamel and hit all of the bare metal edges. Kids are getting off school. Okay, so this is where things got a little hairy. There's one key difference between how you install a flare and how you install a window, and it all has to do with how they bond to your van. We ended up spending a lot of time researching how both professionals and non-professionals like us adhere their windows to their vehicles. Turns out no one does it the same. Some people use a bonding primer and other people didn't. Some people put the bonding primer on the window, other people put it on the van, other people put it on both surfaces. We even watched one video of a professional saying that everyone in the auto industry does it wrong and his way was right. Yeah, that's just the internet. So we just did all the research we could and made a decision. We ended up purchasing some 3M window weld and single step primer. Oh, and we grabbed some daubers. Our plan was to take the primer and apply it to the van itself and then take the window weld and put it on the window and then sandwich them together. A lot of people put a rubber U-shaped edge trim and that will give you a good look on the interior, but since we're gonna be making our own frame around it at some point, I'm not too worried about that. The first thing I did was rough up the edges all along our cutout. And we don't wanna go like too aggressive. You don't have to go to bare metal. I figured it wouldn't hurt to rough up the surface on the van so that the primer had something a little more substantial to bond to, since that's what we did with the flares. We also made sure to clean up any dust or debris that was on the van with some mineral spirits. And with that, it was time to apply our primer. So the first thing you do is shake it for about 60 seconds until you can hear the bead inside. So with a dauber loaded up with primer, Ben went ahead and applied a solid line all the way around the perimeter of the opening. And I did that with one foul swoop. You're not gonna need to go and load it back up. Just one time dipping it into the container will get you around the entire opening. And the reason they don't want you to go back in with that same dauber is because you might have some type of dirt or debris from wiping it on the van and then you're gonna put it back in the container which can affect the primer. One thing that did happen while I was doing it though is the camera died. We just had a camera battery die, which means that file is now corrupt and you won't see me do this. I did go back and thicken my line. I did a second pass so you could see the process of applying the primer to your van. Cool. I had a cat growing up named Gobber. And every time I say Dobber, it reminds me of Gobber. So what we're doing right now is tracing our inner ring so that we know how and where to place our adhesive on the window. Got it. Now with your primer drying, you can prep your 3M window weld. All right, popped it open with a flathead screwdriver. You can screw this on. I'm gonna cut a big triangle notch in it, like so. Can you tell? Can you see there's a triangle there? You can, yeah. And the point of that is to hopefully reduce cleanup at the end so you're not getting as much adhesive down. And when you press it, it's not gonna push out on the interior and exterior where you gotta then take mineral spirits and do all that and clean it all up. Time to lay it down and stick it up. Also, don't forget to put your tape on the outside to help support your window once you pop it in there until it's fully cured. I then followed a half inch off that pencil line with the window weld. And I tried to make a solid bead in one continuous motion with the triangle tip at the top, but there was one spot where the line got really close to the un painted part of the glass, which is right here. I wanted to make sure that when we push the window down, none of that adhesive would ooze out and make a mess on the transparent portion of the glass. So I just took a wider stroke around that trace line. Oh yeah, if it's cold, keep your tubes inside. It's very thick and it's difficult to squeeze through. Or maybe you're cool and you have one of those electric powered caulk guns and it'll just squeeze it out regardless. Or you're just really, really strong. Yes, man hands. Ah! I don't have those. 
then it was time to put it in place. Since our window actually opens, we were able to put it into place without any special tools. But it may be easiest to pick up a set of suction cups to help you put it into place. We lined everything up, placed our tape, and then Julie came here on the inside while I pressed along the entire perimeter to make sure we got a solid bond. Now it's time to have it sit and let dry. Like that James Bond song. Sit and let dry. <laughs> The 3M window weld has a 24 hour cure time, but since it was getting pretty cold overnight, we put our space heaters on the interior of the van like we did with our flares. And just to be safe, we let it sit for about two or three days. We then came back and gave it the good old water test. Dun dun dun! Yuck. We poured all around the edges and even on the window opening itself to make sure we had a watertight seal and we were good. And that was it, window installed. So now we have loads of natural light coming in between this window and our flares. I will say that our sliding door is already loud and this window, since it has a screen insert, it had a little bit of a rattle. Maybe getting the window without the screen insert will be a bit quieter, but I think the trade-off of natural light versus a little bit of noise is worth it. But we're happy with it. What's your opinion on windows? Do you think it's worth it? Is it not? Are you still trying to be stealthy? Either way, we hope this video provided you with some worthwhile information. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave it in the comments or reach out to us through Instagram or email and we'll get back to you. We really appreciate you following along with us. And if you're not already, please subscribe. Stay tuned for our next video where we're gonna go through our entire heated subfloor insulation. Bye bye now. Bye bye, -bye now. Bye. <laughs> I feel like comment wise, we're just gonna get like guys who are like, yeah, great install. We'll see how it holds up in a year. What's your favorite kind of cheese? Just something. <laughs> I want people to comment. What do you want out of your window? Light? A breeze? <laughs> a light breeze? <laughs> we don't know how YouTube works. I'm pretty sure this algorithm's bullshit. I'm pretty sure you gotta buy views. And we don't want them. No. Because we're poor. So take that. YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> Okay, I think we got it. I think we got it. <laughs> That's a wrap.